Yes. النهاردة هنبتدي أول يوم من حلقة التعامل مع الآخرين جانب من خارج مش شرط تبقى إن هما يبقى لغتهم الأساسية إنجلش ولكن برضه نتعلم إزاي هما بيتكلموا إنجلش ونتعرف أكتر على ثقافتهم. So let's welcome our guest for today from Mexico. Hi. Hi. Um, well, I'm very excited to be here. I have never been interviewed before. And I'm really excited to like get to know you and get to know your culture and get to share about my culture and what I do. We are so excited too. So tell me more about yourself. Um, well, I am 16 years old. Um, I'm about to turn 17 in like a little bit over a month. I am a high school student in Mexico. I was born and raised in Mexico. Um, my dad is from Honduras, so maybe that's the reason why I do not look very Mexican or the stereotype of Mexican. And, um, well, I, I moved to the United States for a year when I was 11 years old. So that's where I learned the English, uh, like the American accent. And that's where I got like really good with English. And I decided to start making YouTube videos during the pandemic because I was really depressed and it was a way for me to like have some sort of therapy and that's how it all started and now you watch my video and now I'm here. So I'm gonna put her yeah, YouTube link in the description box so you can visit her and support her. Um, so you can ask me now any question. Yeah, I want to know um, why did you decide to make this type of videos, like interview people? Yeah, so uh, so the idea came from the RAS program, as you know. So on, on Discord, the RAS program copy, uh, um, gather all the students from all over the world, from different cultures, and I was like, oh, that's amazing. Like, why won't you do that in our daily life, like copy with other cultures and speak with them and just be friends together? So from here came the idea. That's, that's really cool. I, I love that RISE has brought people together. And like, I never imagined I would be here, like meeting you. And it's really beautiful. I'm honestly really glad and happy that I am here and that you chose me for this interview. We too, actually, like, uh, we, are, we are so happy to have, to, we can talk to other people from other cultures. That You feel that's so great that you are able to do that. Yes. Um, so tell me more about uh, what, which place or um, a city in um, Mexico are most attracted by tourists? Um, well, I think that the most attractive places in Mexico are the beaches because we have the Caribbean, but we also have the Pacific Ocean. Like we're literally in like the middle of two big oceans. And I think that Cancun, it's a very important city. I'm pretty sure that's like the most popular city, but um, we also have Mexico City, which is a humongous, humongous city full of like culture and I, I think it represents Mexico to its finest because um, it represents our roots, our indigenous roots, like the um, architecture, like kind of what you have in Egypt, but with Mexican indigenous cultures with like pyramids and stuff like that. But we also have humongous buildings and a World Trade Center with all of this technology and multiculturality that I, I find really amazing. And we also have like the Northern States are desert. Um, well, yeah, they are deserts. So uh, it's full of like arid places, kind of like in the Middle East. But then if you go to the South of Mexico, we have jungles and like um, it's very wet. And if you come to the center part of Mexico, it's like if it was eternal summer, there is always sun and it's always hot, but like not extremely hot. I think we have all climates, so it's perfect for like whatever type of tourism you That's want to do. really so great. That's really so great. I have to visit one time. 
<laughs> you definitely should. I, I would like to know about Egypt because I have never, never like visited any place near like the Middle East. And I have no idea what the culture is like. Sometimes, unfortunately, to this side of the world, because we have a lot of um, like influence from the United States, we get like all the bad news, but we never get the good news. We never get like all the amazing things that you do or the amazing things that you have and about your culture. I really have no idea about anything in Egypt except for the pyramids. Yes. Did you imagine talking with the girl like you get from Egypt? No, never. I <laughs> I had a friend from Turkey and you remind me a lot of her because I don't know, like I'm talking to you and I'm getting deja vu from my Turkish friend. And I was always like really intrigued by Egypt because of like the Egyptians. I love, love reading about them because they they were like so advanced and I really don't know what like Egyptians are now, like what they do and what society is like, but at least a thousand years ago, they were all like the center of the world. So I don't know what, what is life now in Egypt? Yeah. So we have all over the, all over Egypt, there is every place you go to, there is a uh, street food that gives street food. Okay. We there's two places as as I told you there in cap uh, in capital Cairo there is Giza, and in Giza there is the pyramids that is not is known of us all over the world, and there is also Luxor, which uh, which contains many many of the past things that we have. Many of the past things people go there just to um, take pictures, know more about the history of Egypt. So those are the two um, two places to uh, Giza and Luxor is actually city in Egypt, okay? okay. We uh, people go there, those are the, the best two places or city, cities to visit. Actually, um, people from outside of the world come to go visit the capital, Cairo, Cairo is the capital. So Cairo is like known all over the world because it contains Giza which have permits, um, and also Luxor. So those are the two places that we have. There's also beaches in Alexandra, Alexandria. Alexandria, okay? Alexandria. Alexandria? Yeah. Okay, okay. It's a, it's a city. It's yeah, a city. like the one that used to have the library that I burnt down. It's a city. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there is a, a beaches. Uh, so it's known for its beaches. Okay. And there's also Borside. 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 Borside is known for the fresh um, fresh fish. Fresh okay. fish and seafood things. So people go there like, okay, I'm going to buy seafood. I'm going there because I want to buy a seafood. It's a fresh seafood. Okay. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> um, uh, it's because I read about... Alexandria that's yeah um the way you pronounce it in English I don't know if that pronunciation is right but okay it's in Arabic it's at least Iskandria 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 yeah you're Iskandria. saying it right okay Iskandria and uh, I read about the library because it's the Alexandria library that burnt down no, there is libraries, but it's known for its beaches. Like people go there like, okay, I'm going to be there for the summer. Oh, because it's like Cancun in Mexico. Yeah. Okay, okay. I get it now. <laughs> and well, what type of like food do you have in Egypt? Because I've never. Yeah, yeah. Egyptian food. I have mulukhiya. 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 It's like leaves. A plant leaves. Mulukhiya, it's like a green a soup, like a soup. Okay. Or a thick soup. Okay. And what is it like? Like Egyptian food is sweet, is spicy? <laughs> no, like there's foods and foods. Uh, let me tell you about my best dish. 
It is macaron bechamel. Macaron bechamel. Macaron bechamel. Yeah, macaron bechamel. <laughs> it's like a. <laughs> okay, okay. It's like a layer of. It's like a layer of macaron. Okay. And then a layer of meat with onion on the pan, and then, uh, and then a bechamel. A layer of bechamel. Bechamel is made up of like it's a, it's like the sauce of mac and cheese, but uh, milk and cheese and butter okay okay and then put all of them and put on the top cheese on the top of all that cheese on the macaron on the top of the macaron cheese mozzarella cheese and then just put it in the oven and like oh that's great it's like a <laughs> lasagna yeah it's like yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly 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 okay. exactly like I, I was saying to my mom mom let's buy lasagna today Macaron bechamel or lasagna? <laughs> <laughs> the two are the same. <laughs> macaron bechamel. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Macaron with bechamel. Okay. Yep. Um, and there's kosher. I think you heard of that. Did you no. heard of it? Kosher. Kosher. Yeah. It's, I, I've it's heard not. that word, but I do not know what it is. Okay. It's it's uh, it's uh, a rice. Okay. With dull, like the black dull. Salt? No, the black dull. Dull. I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's just <laughs> skip this point. Okay. It, you don't have to put it, actually. It's like, uh, okay, you don't have, you can speak, skip it, okay? And just okay. like, uh, what else? Um, sauce like tomato sauce. Okay, sauce. Okay. And like onions, fried, fried, uh, fried onions. Like it's crunchy, you know. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, that's all. Oh, it's Dog. like mm -hmm. a, it's like rice. It's like yeah, rice. rice like other with, things with chickpeas also. Chickpeas. We okay. can put chickpeas. Yeah, we can put chickpeas. So it's like, um. Yeah, it's, it's old and a uh, sauce, a uh, tomato sauce made up of garlic, uh, black pepper, okay, okay. tomato. That sounds really good. Because... Okay, I'm gonna, you have to see it. You have to see it on Google. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Can you uh, like share a picture with me through Instagram or something? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna share it with you. It's because I love food and I... I have sometimes Who do not love food. Who do not love food? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I like food that has flavor. I need food to have spices and condiments. I need food to be okay. like tasteful because that's what I'm used to. But then when I go to the United States, food there is sweet. Like beans are sweet and tortillas are sweet. So I I don't like sweet food. I like spicy food or like salty food and yeah <laughs> okay i'm gonna send it to you right now okay okay you see the i sent it to you on instagram yeah um do you see the black ones there okay uh-huh do you know what those are no is it like meat no it's not me <laughs> <laughs> i've never never seen those things before or like beans? So it's like rice. It's dull. Beans. It's dull. You can write dull on Google and see it. Dull. Donk. Like D-O-N-G. Donk. Dull. 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 D-A-L. D-A-L. D? D-A-L. A-L. Okay. D-A-M. Oh. L L D A L A L yeah doll okay it's an oh. in Indian yeah but I've never we don't have this in Mexico or like in America really no <laughs> never I've never seen these things because it's also made uh, we made also with it soup and we yeah. call it ats in Arabic we call it ats in Arabic you can see that they also made from it soup also make from it soup no but we don't we don't have this in mexico i had never seen this 
<laughs> there's a, I would say, yeah, there's a, a yellow one and there's a black one. So we use the black one in the kosher. Okay, okay. That sounds really good. <laughs> like, I, I will see if I can try it <laughs> someday in my life. Okay, so my question is, um, what I know is that you have a day in Mexico which you remember uh, the death by putting their pictures and just bring for them food and drinks. So it's, that's interesting. Tell me more about this. We call it in Spanish, Dia de Muertos. And it basic, basically means Day of the Death. I actually have a video where I made a shrine in my YouTube channel and I talk a little bit more about this, but essentially it's, it's a tradition that comes from thousands of years ago. And Mexico was colonized by the Spanish and they brought the Catholic religion. But originally Mexico here had a lot of like um, ancient civilizations that believed in the eternal life, kind of like in Egypt, like the same kind of thing, but in America. And um, this ancient cultures uh, were forced into Catholicism by the Spaniards. So to kind of make this transition easier, they started creating different holidays. And one of those holidays, it's Day of the Dead, um, where we remember people that have died. And we remember, for example, in my case, I remember my grandparents or some of my aunts, or um, teachers, like whoever that I've known that is already dead. And um, we make a shrine. And in this shrine, we put candles and food and water and different things that have meanings. They have symbolisms. And the food that we put in the shrine, it's food that the dead person liked. For example, in my case, if I like pizza and I die, my kids will put pizza in my shrine so that my soul comes and extracts the flavor from the pizza. And they come one day a year and they visit the shrines. And it's a way for us to remember that even if you're dead, it doesn't mean that you're gone. It just means that you have transcended to another place, but you are still here with us and we still remember you. And it's, I think it's a beautiful thing to do because yeah. in, in Mexico, um, we do not really see dead as something that we fear. We see dead as something that's part of life. And um, it's a way to think like, okay, life and dead are together and we are going to live and going to die, but we're not going to leave. We're going to still be here with the people that loved us. And I think that's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. Like, that's so sweet. <laughs> I love it. It's called yeah, that's Day of the Dead. And it's, it's very colorful. We make shrines with colorful paper and with flowers. We call those flowers Sempasuchi. And um, these flowers have a really strong smell. So they guide the soul to the shrine. And well, it's, it's a beautiful tradition. I think it symbolizes a lot what the Mexican culture is like. It's, it's super colorful, full of symbolisms, of indigenous symbolisms and Catholic symbolisms. So I think I really like it. And I love to celebrate that. <laughs> I'd like to celebrate it with you too. <laughs> Come and get me. <laughs> it's in November. <laughs> So you should totally try it out. And do you have something like this in Egypt? Or like something similar? I have something like this. After, the, after, the, after someone death, we enroll again after 40 days of his okay. death. After 40 days of his death. Funeral, okay, okay. Yeah. Like we wear black, black t-shirts, black pantalons. We do not like, uh, you do the same. What do you wear that day? No, we wear colorful things <laughs> or we wear normal yeah. shirts. <laughs> That's um, not the same. Not the same at all. 
<laughs> when when someone dies like during a funeral um it's sad and we pray we yeah and pray. Then we do it for the second time yeah here in mexico we do the same thing it's like a normal funeral and we were black and stuff like that but day of the dead is every single year so even if your grandma died 10 years ago you will remember her every single day of your life and Um, it's colorful. It's not something sad. We make food and we put candles and we like make humongous shrines. Some families make humongous shrines. They're like big and they prepare for Day of the Dead for months. And it depends a lot on the family, but it's it's mostly a happy like celebration. Like the movie Coco. I don't know if you have one. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Like well, it's... It, That it chose that it chose that <laughs> that's why I asked you yeah, actually. Well, I that make... movie, that movie represents. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that's right. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more fantasy, you know. You see the skeletons and stuff like that. It's like a little bit more for children, but essentially it is like yeah, that. I, yeah. We, I know for that. example, in Mexico we have a traditional movie. dog that is called Cholos Quincle, and this dog comes from ancient years like from the indigenous cultures and this dog is supposed to guide the soul of the owner and also we have mystical creatures that are called alebrijes and they are colorful mixtures of animals and i will share a picture with you because alebrijes are an art yeah. and alebrijes are also mythical creatures that guide your soul into the other world So I don't know. I think it's it's really cool. I really like it. I think yeah, it's can... really cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's really cool and interesting. Look, these things are alebrijes. I'm gonna share a picture with you. So like you kind of get the idea because I cannot explain what alebrijes are. Like these colorful things are alebrijes. And this guide your Ooh. soul to the other world. Well, that's really great. And it's art. Like you have to handcraft it, and you have to paint it, and everything. Oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> do you have names for everyone? Um, what do you mean? Like, do you have a names for them? Oh, like no, what does it do? No, you come up with your own. Like artists and, oh, oh. and craftsmen, they just decide to make a new one and it's it's an art and you can buy yeah. one and use it as a creation and these creatures are supposed to guide your soul into um the other world which it has different words but i think that it's called um mictlan the mictlan it's like heaven mictlan mictlan and These creatures guide your soul to the Mictlán. And um, these alebrijes. We have really weird things. <laughs> I don't know if I'm confusing you. <laughs> no, but that's really interesting to know. <laughs> um, for example, in my daily life, like modern day society does not really have very strong beliefs in this type of things. But... Ancient people or like indigenous cultures that are still in Mexico is still have very strong connections to these beliefs. And they believe in Mictlan and they believe in Alebrijes. It depends a lot on like the, the type of person that you're talking to. But overall, like the Mexican culture believes in Dia de Muertos and this type of celebrations. Oh, that's really great to know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's really great to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy. Like any uh, other yeah. Okay. So tell me about the Mexican food. Because I, I really, uh, the only thing that I know about it, that is so hot and spicy. <laughs> it is. It is mostly super spicy. We have an infinite amount of like spicy things, like an infinite amount of peppers. Um, It's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but like the most popular type of Mexican food are tacos. And tacos. tacos is, I know them. Yeah. I know them. Tacos I know are them. 
tortilla with like meat. Yeah. And it's really, it's really good. And, and it's crunchy. Excuse me? It's crunchy. No, those are the American tacos. The Mexican tacos are not crunchy. <laughs> They have life to all of you. Because we have a restaurant here. It's also called Tacos. So we go and buy it from them. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's American Taco. It's American Taco. Like Americans yeah. have come up with their own version of the Mexican Taco. But yeah. it's nowhere near the actual taco. So tell me the real one. The real one, it has a tortilla, which is kind of a kebab. Like, do you know kebabs? Kebab? Kebab. Yeah. If we have kebabs. Uh, we do not have kebabs, but we <laughs> have tortillas. <laughs> but I yeah. have tried, I have tried kebabs, and they are the tortilla. It's very similar, but kebabs are from um, flour, and tortillas are from corn, so they have a different flavor. Oh wait a minute! Is kebabs a uh, bread? Um. Yeah, you know, kebab is a bread. We, we, I know kebabs, um, we have kebabs, like it's a meat. <laughs> it's a meat. We do not use, uh, we don't have kebabs like per se, but look, these are what actual tacos look like. Like this is what tacos that I buy in Mexico look like. And Ooh. this is meat. And no, it's not really crunchy. No, it's not crunchy. It's like soft. It's really good. I prefer soft tacos and crunchy tacos. These are actual Mexican oh. tacos. Like they look like this. So what, what? So what was I eating? Is American tacos. American tacos, yes. But no. um, we have most of our food has tortilla, which is like the. Yeah, I know it. Tortilla, yeah, like yeah. that. It's we like have bread. we it's have bread. some foods with crunchy tortilla. We have some foods with soft tortilla. We have, depending on the region that you're located in Mexico, it's the traditional like food. For example, in the coast, they eat a lot of like fresh seafood, like fish and shrimps, because it's it's what's near to them. So if you go to Cancun or Veracruz, which are um, like coast cities, you will eat fish or like f seafood. I personally do not like seafood, like in general. I do not really eat seafood because I do not like fish. But Mexican seafood, it's so good. And in the north part of Mexico, the one that is close to the United States. Do you States, like fish? Because you, like, you don't like fish. So you, do you like you shrimp? Yeah, I love shrimp, shrimp. But I don't like fish. Okay. Okay. But I still eat it. Like... I will eat it. And in the north part- If you're of, hungry. <laughs> if I'm hungry, I'll eat fish. And in the north part of Mexico, we eat a lot of meat, like um, cow meat, or uh, it's mostly cow meat, like a lot of barbecues. And in the center part of Mexico, it's where most of the cuisine is in. And they have something that is called mole. And mole-, mole. Mole, yes, and we mole. have so many types of moles. Like what? What is mole? What, what is mole? Mole. I'm gonna show you mole. a picture of what mole is, and depending on the state of the of Mexico that you're in, it varies. But it's this, and it's made of of like um, it has meat. is it meat? Yeah, it's meat, and it has like a sauce, and that sauce we call it mole. Mole. And how does it taste? Yeah, look, this is the mole poblano. This is from one state. But we have so many moles. How does it taste, the mole? The mole. Um, the one from Puebla, it's sweet. Like a little bit of sweet, mm. but it's spicy. So it's weird. It's a weird texture. Not everyone likes it. The mole from Oaxaca, which is another state, it's very spicy, but it has nuts. So it has like a nutty flavor with the spiciness. And you can mix it in with different like peppers. So you can make green mole or red mole or black mole, depending on what spices you add to it. We also have tamales, 
which I don't know if you have heard of them. Tamales. tamales are are a little bit more popular in the international community. And I don't know it. They are a ball of like um I forgot the word of dough of like corn yeah. dough. and it's filled with meat or you can make sweet tamales Ooh. and this comes from ancient times from like our our indigenous roots because in Mexico the cuisine it's like a mixture of his tribe for and European like we have that mixture of indigenous cuisine with Spanish cuisine so we're like that mixture of both and it's 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 cool I've never never eaten like everything that we have in Mexico because our cuisine it's like so big like I have no idea I've never tried everything that we have and it's like very spicy so if you're not used to it you can have stomach issues like what do you drink with it What? We are not used to it. We drink water. We make fruit water. Like, um, we call it... Fruit water? Fruit water. Like, you make water, but with fruits. So it's sweet. Yeah. And it has that fruit flavor. Because here we have so many fruits. And fruit is very cheap. Because since we are a very, very warm weather, we can produce so many fruits and so many vegetables. So since we have a lot, we make water with those fruits and we sometimes drink soda like coke coke is very big here or just water but mostly it's coke and um fruit water oh my god you drink coke with, with spicy food <laughs> yeah <laughs> coke we, spicy. oh my god oh my god when i do when i just drink when i just drink coke with spicy food i'm like oh my god there is a ball fire in my mouth i know i do not really like spicy food because my mouth can't handle it but my family it's so spicy like i'm impressed by the amount of spiciness they can handle and i don't know why <laughs> it's just i don't it's maybe just like tradition or culture yeah but it's very very spicy it's like indian food like do you like uh, to put many peppers in the food hot peppers I don't. I personally don't, but I'm weird because everyone here likes a spicy food. And I'm like the weird one. Like everyone always judges me because I do not like spicy food. <laughs> well, I personally like I don't like spicy food too. It's because it hurts. And it, everyone, when we are eating, our mouths hurt. Everyone is always yeah. complaining about how hot their mouths are. But the hotter they are, their mouths feel the better which is it's real weird it's masochist but i don't know uh, well wrap this up i have a last question okay okay so how is your english perfect like that uh you, you told me that you went to the usa mm -hmm. oh so that's why uh, okay yeah well it's part of why when i grew up i went to a bilingual school So since I was like three years old, I was taught English and Spanish. And then when I moved to the United States, it's where I got the American accent. But I still have a Mexican accent in some words. But um, I got like the hand of the English when I went to the United States. And then when I came back to Mexico, I entered a multicultural high school. So all of my classes are in English. And that's where I got like more vocabulary. And that's how I learned English. I also watch a lot of movies in English. Thank you really for joining us. We are, yeah, we are so happy to have you today. Get like, we are so happy to have you today. <laughs> um, really enjoyed talking with you. That's really, uh, that was so exciting talking to you. You're so adorable and cute. And thank you for all this information. Like, um, thank you really for this all information. Uh, go and support her. I'll put her YouTube channel in the description box. Ruha Damuha. Wamla tips for um um support, subscribe and likes. 
شجعوها وهي بتعمل حاجات وعملت حاجات حلوة كتير فشوفكم في فيديو جاي من سلسلة تعامل مع الأجانب مرة أخرى وقلنا لو حابين نعمل حاجة زي دي أكتر في الكومنت عشان نعرف نكمل غير لأ And thank you for joining us for today. You can end the video with Spanish sentence. Um, well, I'm gonna end this video. Um, muchas gracias por ver este video. La verdad, no sé cuántas personas entiendan lo que estoy diciendo ahorita, y tampoco sé cómo suena el español para las personas que no lo hablan. Pero estoy muy agradecida de poder compartir mi cultura y que a la gente en realidad le interese. Eh, nunca creí que, que estaría aquí, la verdad, y ahora estoy muy contenta, muy contenta de poder compartir lo que soy, compartir mis raíces y todo lo que me ha hecho a mí, y hacerlo con, en un ambiente tan inclusivo. So, thank you very, very much. <laughs> thank you for, very much for all this information. Like, I can't get it from anyone else than you. Like, you are the better one. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, goodbye. See you in another video. And let's keep in touch. We are friends right now. Yeah, right? we're friends. <laughs> Bye. 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 You are the best.